Hey everyone, welcome to another deep dive. This time, we're rewinding back to the 90s. Ooh, the 90s. To revisit the yeah. golden age of martial arts films. I like that. Golden age. I like it. Um, and, and we've got a great article here highlighting the top 10 films of that decade that really kind of... Shaped the genre. Yeah, shaped the genre. And even continue to influence action films today. Absolutely. Now, you're probably here because... You love martial arts movies. Mm -hmm. Maybe you're prepping for like a movie marathon. Right. Or maybe you're just looking to finally see what all the hype is about. Sure. So we're going to break it all down. Really unpack what made these films so groundbreaking. You know, what I think is so fascinating about the 90s is how it really became this kind of... Uh, a fusion. Yeah, fusion of traditional martial arts and some really cutting edge filmmaking techniques. Um, particularly like... Hong Kong cinema just exploded onto the global stage. Yeah. And, you know, these movies weren't just about showing off amazing fighting skills. They were weaving these really captivating stories and pushing the limits of, you know, action cinema. Yeah. When I was a kid, you know, watching these films, I was just floored by the stunts and the action. Worse. But, you know, thinking back on it now, it was more than just the spectacle. Mm. You know what I mean? It was the way they blended art and action together and mm -hmm. really created this unique cinematic experience. Exactly. That's where this top 10 list that we have, um, it really comes in. Okay. Because it's like a roadmap to understanding how martial arts cinema really evolved in the 90s. Um, okay. So should we jump in? Yeah, let's do it. All right. Let's start with the film that tops the charts. Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. Ooh, classic. Now, most people probably remember those breathtaking fight scenes. Of course. But what's really interesting is how the director, Ang Lee, he actually used wire foo to tell a deeper story. Oh, interesting. Almost like the characters' emotions were being expressed through their movements, you know? Yeah, like it wasn't just about cool flips and kicks. Yeah. It was like those movements conveyed longing or heartbreak, even defiance. Like, right. I never even thought about it that way. That's kind of genius. Yeah. And then you compare that to, like, number two on this list, Fist of Legend, okay. which is more about raw power <laughs> yeah. and precision. Um, this one, you really see Jet Li at his best, like, lightning fast strikes, pinpoint accuracy. I mean, oh yeah, it's just pure martial arts mastery. Yeah, I remember watching that final fight scene in Fist of Legend and just being, like, in awe of how fast Jet Li was. Yeah, and that's classic Yuan Wuping choreography. Oh, wow. The guys behind, I mean, some of the most iconic fight scenes ever. You didn't they... realize that. Yeah, but even in a film that's so focused on combat, there's this deeper layer to it. I mean, Fist of Legend is actually a remake of Bruce Lee's Fist of Fury. Wow. And it kind of subtly tackles these themes of national pride and resistance against oppression. So even in these like action-packed films, they were like weaving in these layers of social commentary. Exactly. That's so cool. Yeah. It's like they managed to entertain and make you think at the same time. Absolutely. And speaking of thought-provoking stories, let's move on to number three, Once Upon a Time in China. Oh, yeah. Another Jet Li classic. Yeah. The legendary Wong Fei Hung. <laughs> exactly. And that one really stood out to me, I think, for like the epic scale of the film yeah. and that historical backdrop. Yeah, totally. You know what I mean? It's not just a martial arts film. It's a historical epic. Right. You know, and Sui Hark, the director, he just expertly blended action with drama. Mm -hmm. And he gives us this, like, larger-than-life hero fighting for justice in this corrupt society. And that ladder fight scene. Oh, don't even get me started. I mean, come on. Yeah, like, cough. That's like pure cinematic brilliance right there. Absolutely. You know, it's interesting when you look at these first three films, yeah. how they showcase such diverse fighting styles. Yeah. Fist of Legend, it's that raw power, crouching tiger, almost like a ballet. Yeah, thing. very ugly. And then Once Upon a Time in China has this blend of agility and strength. Yeah. It's really cool how each film kind of brought its own flavor to the genre, right? Absolutely. And that's what made this era so special. Yeah. Diversity. Now, speaking of diverse styles, let's talk about a legend. Jackie Chan and his film Drunken Master 2, number four on our list. Oh, Jackie Chan. Yeah. He brought something completely different, right? Like yeah. that that blend of comedy and martial arts. It was amazing. Absolutely. And Drunken Master 2 is like the perfect example of that. Oh, yeah. You have these incredibly intricate fight scenes, but they're infused with his trademark humor and like acrobatic flair. Yeah. And we can't forget about the drunken boxing style itself. Yeah, what's that all about? Right. It's this fascinating technique that mimics the unpredictable movements of, like, a drunkard. Wow. Which makes it both 
hilarious. Oh, I bet. And incredibly effective. He makes it work, right? He does. Yeah, he does. It's like he turned a disadvantage into an advantage. It's a genius. It is. Yeah, it really is. And I bet most people don't realize that there's actual history and technique behind that, you know, that drunken fighting style. Oh, I'm sure they don't. Yeah. It's not just slapstick comedy. There's real skill involved. Wow, that's really interesting. And Jackie Chan's ability to execute those moves with such, like, precision yeah. and comedic timing, that's what makes him a legend. Totally. Speaking of legendary, Rumble in the Bronx is number five. Oh, yeah, classic. His breakout film in the West. Yeah. I mean, come on. Packed with those death-defying stunts he's known for. Remember that hovercraft scene? Oh, come on. That was pure Jackie Chan magic right there. It was incredible. And what's interesting is that, you know, despite being set in the Bronx, right. it was actually filmed in Vancouver. Wait, really? Yeah. They completely transformed the city to look like New York. I had no idea. That's wild. Yeah, it's pretty wild. It's incredible, though, like how they managed to, you know. Right. Create that, that vibe. Uh, yeah. Yeah, create that New York vibe while filming in a completely different country. Totally. It's a testament to the filmmaking techniques of the time. And I think Rumble in the Bronx really solidified Jackie Chan's global appeal. Yeah. He brought this, like, fresh energy to action cinema, blending martial arts with humor and heart yeah. in a way that really resonated with audiences, I think, worldwide. Absolutely. All right, let's shift gears a bit here. At number six, we have The Blade. Oh, yeah, The Blade. A film known for its kind of darker, grittier tone. It is darker. Yeah. It is very, very different. Yeah. It's a great example of how the genre wasn't afraid to explore different moods and themes, you know? Okay. Yeah. And this one's directed by Sui Hark again, and he's really known for, like, visually striking films mm -hmm. and often unconventional storytelling. It's actually... Uh, a, a reimagining of the classic um, One Armed Swordsman, okay, but with a much more brutal and raw like aesthetic. Yeah, I can see why it's considered a cult classic. Yeah, it definitely pushed the boundaries of what a martial arts film could be. Right, it wasn't all yeah sunshine and heroism. Yeah, not at all. Yeah, totally it, different vibe. It is. It's a good reminder that this genre is more than just high flying picks and epic battles. Right. You know, there's room for darkness, complexity, and some raw emotion. And speaking of raw emotion, we have John Woo's Hard Boiled at number seven. Hard Boiled. Yeah. Oh, this is a classic. It is. For those who for love a healthy dose of gunplay with their martial arts. Oh, right? well, yeah. I mean. Classic. Come on. Gun -fu. I mean, those slow motion dove scenes, the balletic gunfights, Chow Yun fat. No, oh, come on. So good. With director Tequila. I mean, come on. Cure action hero gold. <laughs> um, you know, Hard Boiled, I mean, while it's not strictly a martial arts film. Right. It's undeniably influenced by the genre. Okay. John Woo's signature style. I mean, you know, that all has roots in martial arts cinema. I remember that epic shootout in the hospital. Whoa. I mean, talk about pushing the limits of action <laughs> filmmaking. It's like a symphony of violence right. and chaos. But orchestrated. But somehow it's all like beautifully orchestrated, you know? Right, yeah. Incredible. And that's the genius of John Woo, right? He takes these incredibly violent scenarios yeah. and he infuses them with this sense of artistry and style yeah it's almost it's, like operatic it is it is okay we've covered some like heavy hitters so far yeah we have but we can't forget donnie yen of course not at number eight we have iron monkey iron monkey yeah um a film that really showcases his like incredible acrobatic skills oh yeah as wong fei hung's father it's a prequel which is interesting oh. to the wong fei hung legend yeah um you know it's got like a classic Robin Hood-esque storyline, oh, you know, okay. masked hero fighting for the poor and oppressed. Yeah. But the real star of the show is the fight choreography. Oh. I mean, Yuan Wu Ping is back at it again, and Donnie Yen's athleticism and precision are just... I've always admired Donnie Yen's, like, fighting style. It's so fluid yeah. and dynamic. Okay. And he brings, like, this really unique energy to his roles, you know? <laughs> Absolutely. And Iron Monkey was really a launching pad for his career, you know? Oh, wow. It cemented him as a major force in martial arts cinema. All right, strap in, because we're about to enter the Matrix. Here we go. At number nine, we have the film that redefined action cinema in the West. The Matrix. The Matrix. I mean, come on. Changed everything. It wasn't just a martial arts film. It was 
like this sci-fi epic right. that redefined what was possible with action and special effects. Absolutely. And, you know, while it wasn't strictly a martial arts film, right. its influence on the genre is undeniable. Oh, yeah. I mean, the Wachowskis brought in, guess who? Yuan Wu Ping. Yuan Wu Ping to choreograph those mind-bending fight sequences. Oh, wow. I mean, his expertise is evident in every single move. And that, like, bullet time. Oh, my God. I mean, come on. The world went crazy for that. Right. Game changer. They took those like wire foo techniques that have been popularized in Hong Kong, blended them with cutting edge special effects yeah. to create a visual spectacle that had never been seen before. Yeah. It's crazy how they managed to make those like superhuman feats look so believable. Yeah. You know, they really like redefined what was possible they did. in action filmmaking. Absolutely. And I think The Matrix proved that martial arts could be seamlessly integrated into different genres, pushing those boundaries of storytelling and visual effects even further. And finally, rounding out our top 10, we have Hero. Hero, another visual masterpiece yeah. directed by Zhang Yimou, starring who else? Jet Li. Jet Li. I mean, come on. It's a feast for the eyes. It is. Each mm -hmm. fight scene is like a beautifully choreographed dance. Yeah. And Zhang Yimou's use of color is just masterful. Oh, yeah. There's a scene, um, I think it's where Jet Li's character is fighting two assassins in a courtyard. And the leaves are swirling around them, creating this incredibly poetic and visually arresting image. Oh, I remember that. It was like watching a moving painting. Yeah. You know, it's interesting how we started this list with Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. Right. Another film that pushed those boundaries of visual storytelling. Absolutely. And we're ending with Hero, which is doing the same thing, but in like a totally different way. Yeah. I think it really highlights that incredible diversity and artistry within the genre. Yeah. You know, both films using action to tell a story, to evoke emotions and to create these really unforgettable cinematic moments. Yeah, it's so clear that the 90s was a turning point for martial arts cinema. Oh, but what made this decade like so special? What were those key ingredients that came together to create like this perfect storm of like cinematic brilliance? Well, there are a few factors at play here. First, you have this incredible wave of talent coming yeah. out of Hong Kong. Directors like Sui Hark, Yuen Wu Ping, John Wu. I mean, they were pushing the limits mm -hmm. of action filmmaking, experimenting with new techniques, new visual styles. Mm. And then you have actors like, you know, Jackie Chan, Jet Lancey, Donnie Yen, yeah. each with their own unique charisma, yeah. skill set, becoming global superstars. I mean, yeah, it's like they were the perfect ambassadors for the genre. Totally. You know, they captivated audiences worldwide. Absolutely. And then, you know, beyond just the individuals, yeah. there was this spirit of innovation mm. and experimentation that was kind of in the air. Yeah. Filmmakers were blending like traditional martial arts with those modern filmmaking techniques, yeah. creating a hybrid style that was both familiar and groundbreaking. So it was really a combination of talent, innovation, and this willingness to kind of push those boundaries like of, so. of what was possible that made the 90s such like a fertile ground yeah. for martial arts cinema. Absolutely. It was a decade that redefined the genre, you know, yeah. and left a legacy that continues to inspire filmmakers and audiences to this day. Yeah. It's clear these films were more than just like action-packed spectacles. Right. They were works of art that captured the imaginations of people worldwide. Yeah, I think so. Transcending cultural barriers. For sure. And leaving this indelible mark on like the history of cinema. Yeah. They really did. But before we like dive deeper into the lasting impact of these films, yeah. I think it's time to take a closer look at some of the other gems on this top 10 list, right? Yeah, we've only scratched the surface here. There's so much more to uncover. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah. All right, so let's jump back into our list with a film that I think really stands out for its like gritty realism, wow. The Blade at number six. Yeah, The Blade definitely has a different vibe. Yeah. Um, I remember it being pretty violent and intense yeah for sure with a focus on like sword play rather than just like hand-to-hand -hand combat you know absolutely it's a very visceral experience and yeah. the fight choreography really reflects that there's a certain rawness to the movements it's a sense of desperation and brutality that sets it apart from films like crouching tiger or right. fist of legend yeah it's interesting how the blade uses like violence to tell this story about like revenge and redemption mm -hmm. while films like Crouching Tiger use it to like, you know, express 
those deeper emotions. All right, yeah. Philosophical ideas. I mean, it just shows like the range For sure. of storytelling yeah. that's possible within the genre. Absolutely. And The Blade is also like a, a great example of how filmmakers were reinterpreting those classic martial arts stories for, you know, a yeah. new generation. Yeah. It's a reimagining of that. Uh, 1967 film, One-Armed Swordsman. Oh, wow. But, you know, Sui Hark brings his own unique vision to the story. Right. Gives it that, like, darker, more psychological edge. Yeah, like building upon that foundation. Yeah. Laid by those, like, earlier films. Exactly. But adding, like, their own contemporary flair. You right, know, totally. And pushing the boundaries of what the genre could achieve. Hmm, for sure. Now, moving on to another film that kind of took inspiration from classic martial arts, but added its own explosive twist. Okay. John Woo's Hard Boiled at number seven. Well, Hard Boiled is pure adrenaline. It is. Incredible gunfights, slow motion doves, chow yun fat. Oh. Chewing scenery with a toothpick in his mouth. I mean. Iconic. Come on. It's iconic. It's a prime example of what we call, you know. Yeah. Gunfu. Gunfu. This blend of martial arts choreography and gunplay right. that really became John Woo's signature style. It's so cool. And, you know, while Hard Boiled isn't technically a martial arts film, uh -huh. it definitely borrows heavily okay. from the genre's aesthetics and those like signature techniques. I've always loved how John Woo uses those like slow motion shots yeah. and the dramatic close ups to just like heighten <sighs> the tension yeah. and create these like operatic moments of action you know right it's almost like he's turning violence into like a form of art you're right Isn't he's it? a master of visual storytelling yeah yeah and hard-boiled is a testament to his ability to create those like incredibly stylized and unforgettable action sequences yeah for sure and speaking of stylized action Let's talk about Donnie Yen and his breakout role in Iron Monkey at number eight. Iron Monkey. I mean, this is where Donnie Yen really shines. He does. You know, his acrobatic skills are on full display yeah. and the fight choreography is top notch. Oh, yeah. Another Yuan Wu Ping masterpiece. Wow. Donnie Yen's performance is electrifying. He brings this like incredible athleticism yeah. and precision to the role. Right. And you can really like see those seeds of his future stardom in this film. What I find fascinating about Iron Monkey is like how it blends social commentary yeah. with this like classic Robin Hood esque storyline. Right. You know, you have this like masked hero yeah. fighting for the oppressed, mm -hmm. but there's also this like critique of corruption and injustice yeah, very... within the system. Absolutely. It's not just a mindless action flick. There's a message embedded within that narrative. Yeah. And that's something we see in a lot of these 90s martial arts films. Right. This ability to entertain yeah but also provoke thought like they were using the spectacle of action cinema to like address real world issues yeah and explore these like universal themes was... of like justice honor resistance totally now shifting gears a bit okay to a film that needs no introduction okay the Matrix at number nine. Oh, The Matrix blew everyone's minds when it came out. It, just... it wasn't just a martial arts film. It was uh -huh. like a sci-fi epic that just redefined what was possible yeah. with action and special effects. It did, yeah. And, you know, while it wasn't strictly a martial arts film, right. it was heavily influenced by the genre. Okay. The Wachowskis brought in Yuan Wu Ping to choreograph those groundbreaking fight sequences. Wow, really? Yeah. And his expertise, I mean, it's just evident yeah. in every punch, kick, and gravity defying stunt. That scene where Neo dodges bullets in slow mo. Oh, come on. I mean, man. that was revolutionary. It was, it was bullet time. Yeah. This visual effect that became synonymous with the Matrix right. and had a massive influence on action cinema. For sure. I mean, it's a testament to how the film just pushed the boundaries of technology and visual storytelling, yeah. creating this truly like immersive yeah. and mind-bending experience. Yeah, it's incredible to think that a film that was like so innovative yeah. and groundbreaking mm. was also like deeply rooted yeah. in the traditions the of martial arts cinema. Exactly. Yeah. It's a perfect example of how filmmakers were taking inspiration from the genre's rich history while also pushing it right. in these bold new directions. It's so cool. And finally, we arrive at Hero. Hero. A film that, like, Crouching Tiger stands out for its, like, visual poetry. It does. And breathtaking fight choreography. It really does. It's like watching a moving painting. 
you know? It, it's, Each scene meticulously composed and bursting with these like vibrant colors. And the fight choreography is so elegant and fluid. It's almost like a dance, you know? It is. It's a perfect example of how Zhang Yimou, the director, uses action to express emotion and tell right. a story. There's that scene where um, I think Jet Li's character is fighting those two assassins in the courtyard mm -hmm. and falling leaves just become part of the choreography. Oh, yeah. Creating this incredibly poetic and visually arresting image. I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. It's not just about the physical movements. It's about using those movements to like create a mood, mm -hmm. to convey a feeling, to like tell a story without words. Exactly. And Hero is a testament to that power of visual storytelling, showcasing how action cinema can be just as artistic yeah. and emotionally resonant as any other genre. You know? So we've gone through this incredible list of films. Yeah, we have. And it's clear that like the 90s was a golden age for martial arts cinema. Mm -hmm. But um, for our listener who might be new to all of this, like, oh, yeah. where would you recommend they start? That's a great question. I think it really depends on what they're looking for, you know? Okay. If they want a film that showcases traditional martial arts mm -hmm. with a strong storyline, I would probably recommend Fist of Legend. Yeah. It's a classic for a reason. Fist of Legend is definitely a great starting point. Yeah. What about for someone who wants more of that, like Jackie Chan blend yeah. of like comedy and action? Oh, for pure entertainment value. Yeah. You can't go wrong with Rumble in the Bronx. Okay. It's just packed with those signature Jackie Chan stunts yeah. and like laugh out loud moments. Perfect. And for someone who wants something like visually stunning okay. and emotionally impactful. Ooh. In that case, I would recommend Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, or Hero. Yeah. Both films are visual masterpieces and they yeah. showcase that like artistic potential of right. martial arts cinema. Yeah. Those are all excellent recommendations. Um, But what about... For someone who wants something a little darker, a little grittier, something uh -huh. that like really pushes the boundaries. Ooh. Okay. In that case, uh -huh. I would say check out the blade. Okay. It's violent. It's intense, but it's also visually stunning. Yeah. And it's a thought-provoking exploration of, like, revenge and redemption. Okay. So we have something for everyone. We do. But I want to go back to something you mentioned earlier about like the '90s being this melting pot yeah. of traditional martial arts and yeah. like. Cutting edge filmmaking. Yeah. Can you elaborate on that a little bit? Sure. What's fascinating about this period, I think, is how filmmakers were taking those classic martial arts tropes. Okay. The hero's journey, the epic battles, the quest for justice. Right. And blending them with these modern filmmaking techniques like wire foo, yeah. slow motion cinematography, uh, right. elaborate set pieces, you know. So they were honoring like the traditions of the genre. Yeah. But also like pushing it forward Soda. in these like new and exciting ways. Exactly. And that's what made this era so special. Right. It wasn't just about replicating what had come before. It yeah. was about innovating, experimenting, right. and creating something truly unique. And that spirit of innovation wasn't just like limited to the technical aspects yeah. of filmmaking. No, not at all. Right. We also saw it in the way these films like explored complex themes yeah. and challenged like social norms for sure a lot of these films tackled issues of like colonialism corruption social injustice yeah. and they were using like the spectacle of action cinema to right. like address these real world problems oh, and we're... spark these important conversations yeah it's like they were using these like fantastical stories yeah. and larger than life characters to like comment on the human condition for sure and explore these like universal themes of like Good versus evil. Yeah. Justice versus oppression. You know, the struggle for, like, individual freedom. Absolutely. And that's what elevates these films beyond, like, just mere entertainment. Right. They offer us a glimpse into different cultures. Yeah. Different perspectives, different ways of seeing the world. I love that. And they do so with a level of artistry and technical brilliance. Yeah. That's just truly awe-inspiring. It's clear that the 90s left an indelible mark on, like, martial arts cinema. It did. But its influence extends far beyond the genre itself. Oh, for sure. You know, these films have inspired countless filmmakers, choreographers, yeah. even athletes, yeah. shaping the way we view, like, 
action and storytelling. Absolutely. In contemporary cinema. You're right. The legacy of these films is undeniable. Yeah. They've influenced everything from Hollywood blockbusters mm -hmm. to independent action films, from video games to oh. even like dance performances. That's crazy. And that's a testament to, I think, their enduring power and their ability to transcend those cultural boundaries. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it really is amazing to think how those 90s martial arts films kind of paved the way for the action blockbusters we see today. I mean, you can see their DNA in everything. Absolutely. From like the intricate fight choreography in John Wick. Oh, yeah. To like the visual spectacle of Shang-Chi. Definitely. The influence is undeniable. Yeah. Those films really raised the bar for action cinema. Yeah. And they showed the world what was possible when you combine, you know, right. skilled martial artists with visionary directors mm -hmm. and cutting edge technology. You know, it's interesting how those 90s films also kind of opened the door for like a new generation of action stars. Oh, yeah. I mean, we talked yeah. about sure, sure. Jackie Chan, Jet yeah. Lai, Donnie Yen. Right. But they were really just the tip of the iceberg. You know? yeah, think about Michelle Yeoh. Oh, yeah. She was incredible in Crouching Tiger. Right. And has gone on to have this amazing career. Yeah. In both, like, Asian and Western cinema. She's a true icon. An icon, yeah. And she's not the only one, right? I mean, uh, we've seen... So many talented martial artists. So many talented martial artists. Like, mm -hmm. breakthrough in recent years, like Tony Ja from Ong Bak. Yeah, Ong Bak. And Iko Uwais from the Raid films. The Raid films are so good. Oh, so good. Yeah. They're carrying the torch, yeah. pushing the boundaries of action uh -huh. and stunt work even further. And it's not just about like the physical skills, you know? Yeah. These actors bring a certain presence and charisma to well, their yeah, roles. For sure. That just, like, captivates audiences, you know? Absolutely. They're not just action figures. Right. They're performers who can convey emotion and depth. Yeah. Even in the midst of, like, yeah. a high-octane fight scene. I think that's one of the key takeaways, honestly, from this whole deep dive. Yeah. It's not just about the punches and the kicks. It's about the storytelling. Yeah. The characters, the themes that resonate with audiences. Exactly. On, like, a, a deeper level. The best martial arts films are the ones that manage to, like, blend that breathtaking action yeah. with those compelling narratives and memorable characters. And that brings us to, like, the big question. Right? Okay. What's next? for martial arts cinema. Ooh, good question. How do you think the genre will evolve yeah. in the years to come? Well, that's a fascinating question. I think we'll continue to see this, like fusion of <laughs> styles and influences. Okay. You know, filmmakers are drawing inspiration from all over the world, blending traditional martial arts with elements of like parkour, mm. acrobatics. Oh yeah, even dance. Yeah, I can totally see that happening. Right, I mean, we're already seeing those influences. Yeah. In films like, you know, The Raid, yeah, which combines Indonesian martial arts with this incredibly, like, visceral and dynamic fighting style. Totally, totally. And I think technology will continue to play a role as well, right? Right, of course. Like, pushing the boundaries of it's visually possible. Yeah. But I also hope, like, we see a return to those, like character-driven stories. Oh, for sure. Right. Yeah, I agree. Those films that really explore the human condition mm -hmm. and use action mm -hmm. as a means to like ex express something deeper, you know? Right. I think audiences are hungry for those stories yeah. that have both substance and spectacle. Blah, blah. They want to be entertained, but they also want to be like moved, challenged, yeah. inspired. And I think martial arts cinema is like uniquely positioned it is. to deliver on all those fronts. You know, totally. It's a genre that has the potential to be both like visually stunning, yeah, and emotionally resonant for sure. To transport us to different worlds mm -hmm. while also reflecting our own humanity. I love that. Well said. So, as we wrap up this deep dive into the world of martial arts cinema, yeah, I want to leave our listener with a final thought. Okay, I like it. Go beyond just watching these films, you know? Right. Let them inspire you to, like, explore different cultures, appreciate the artistry and discipline of martial mm -hmm. arts, mm -hmm. and maybe even try learning a martial art yourself, you know? I love that. You never know. You might discover a hidden talent. Yeah. Or a newfound passion. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, hey, it's been a pleasure diving into this topic with you. Likewise. And uh, I hope our listener feels inspired to continue their exploration too. of martial arts cinema. For sure. Thanks for joining us on this journey through the world of, like, high-flying kicks. Oh, yeah. Epic battles. Of course. And unforgettable stories. 
Until next time, keep exploring, keep learning, and keep watching those amazing films. Yeah.